Hi, and welcome to this new video in the series on Bluetooth Low Energy Technology. My name is Mohamed Afani, and in today's video we'll be covering the new features introduced in the latest release of Bluetooth, version 5.2. Some of the topics we'll address in this video include an overview of the new features introduced in version 5.2, then we'll go over each of these features in a little bit more detail, including enhanced attribute protocol, LE power control, and isochronous channels. And finally, we'll talk about the next generation of Bluetooth audio, referred to as LE audio, which utilizes isochronous channels. The three major features introduced in Bluetooth 5.2 are the enhanced attribute protocol, LE power control or LEPC, and isochronous channels. Let's go over each of these in a bit more detail. The new enhanced attribute protocol is an upgraded version of the original attribute protocol. Whereas the original unenhanced attribute protocol operates in a sequential manner, the enhanced attribute protocol provides a way to perform concurrent or parallel transactions between a BLE client and a server and potentially reduce the latency of operations in some applications. For example, this is useful on a smartphone where multiple apps may be interfacing with a Bluetooth Low Energy device. By utilizing the enhanced attribute protocol, an app's attribute transaction would not be blocked while another app's attribute transaction is currently in progress, essentially allowing different apps to interact with a Bluetooth Low Energy device in parallel. The way this works is by separating the L2 cap layer maximum transmission unit or MTU from the attribute layer's MTU. Here's an example to better visualize this. If the L2 cap layer MTU is smaller than the attribute layer MTU, then this will cause the L2 cap layer to break up the PDUs coming from the upper attribute layer into smaller chunks and interleave the PDU chunks coming from different applications. So in this example, we have application A that is sending a PDU larger than the L2 cap MTU size, which means it will be broken up into chunks of sizes up to the L2 cap MTU. This will allow the PDUs from application A and application B to be interleaved instead of application A's PDU being blocked by application B's PDU. The last couple of things we want to mention is that the enhanced attribute protocol is optional per the specification and that it requires encryption of the connection between two Bluetooth Low Energy devices, which makes it inherently more secure than the original unenhanced attribute protocol. The next new feature is called LE Power Control. First, let's go over a few important facts. In wireless communication, the Received Signal Strength Indicator, or RSSI, can be used to estimate the distance of the receiver from a transmitter if the original transmit power is known to the receiver. Wireless receivers have an optimal received signal strength range. Higher or lower than this range may cause issues with decoding the received signal, so the RSSI within this range provides better signal quality. With the new LE power control feature, a receiving device monitoring the level of the signal, the RSSI from a connected device, may request a change in the transmit power level used by its peer in either direction. A transmitter may also change the transmit power voluntarily and relay that information to the receiver. Utilizing LE power control and keeping the RSSI within the optimal range of the receiver provides a few benefits. Some of those benefits include better control over the quality of the signal, reducing error rates at the receiving end, and improving coexistence with other signals in the 2.4 GHz band, including ones other than Bluetooth such as Wi-Fi and Zigbee. Support for this feature, however, is optional, but if the two devices support the feature, then they must use it for power management control. The last and probably most important new feature that we want to talk about is support for isochronous channels. Now if you look up the meaning of the word isochronous, you'll find that it means occurring at the same time. In this context, it means supporting data transmissions that are time sensitive and providing support for synchronized rendering of the data across multiple receivers. 
This new feature serves as the foundation for the next generation of Bluetooth audio, referred to as LE Audio. It introduces a new physical channel in Bluetooth Low Energy called the LE Isochronous Physical Channel, which can be used on any of the LE Phi's, including the 1 Megabit Phi, the 2 Megabit Phi, or the LE Coded Phi, which includes S equals 2 or S equals 8 configurations. Isochronous channels are supported for both connection-oriented and connectionless communication such as broadcasts. In connection-oriented communication, each stream is referred to as a connected isochronous stream or CIS. When CISs need to be synchronized, such as when sent to left and right earbuds, they are configured to be part of a single group, referred to as a connected isochronous group or CIG. Streams that are part of the same CIG share timing reference data, which is necessary for synchronized stream rendering at the multiple receivers. CIGs allow bi-directional data transfer, such as in earbuds that contain microphones and for sending control data to the source device. Note that a device may create multiple connected isochronous groups. For connectionless communication, such as broadcasts, a group of synchronized streams may be used to stream data from a single source to multiple syncs. Each stream is referred to as a Broadcast Isochronous Stream, or BIS. A group of BISs are referred to as a Broadcast Isochronous Group, or BIG. An example of this would be a TV streaming audio data to multiple syncs, such as different individuals wearing earbuds. Just as in the case of CIGs, a device may also create multiple BIGs. One important parameter in isochronous channels is the ISO interval. It defines the interval at which events occur. Each event is split into multiple sub-events. The ISO interval ranges from 5 milliseconds to 4 seconds. And in connection-oriented communication, in each sub-event, the master will send a packet to the slave and the slave will respond with a packet. In connectionless communication, however, only the master will send a packet in each sub-event. And in this case, these packets could either be isochronous data or broadcast control information data. Isochronous channels also support data retransmissions. However, they differ between connection-oriented and connectionless communication. In the case of broadcast isochronous streams, retransmissions are sent by the master without influence from the slave or the slaves. In the case of connected isochronous streams, retransmissions are sent when a slave has not acknowledged a packet. Also note that retransmissions are sent on different channels than the original packet in order to reduce the risk of packet loss or corruption. Isochronous channels are the foundation for the next generation of Bluetooth audio, which is referred to as LE Audio. LE Audio operates on Bluetooth Low Energy rather than the traditional Bluetooth Classic or BREDR, as in most current audio applications. Interoperability, however, relies on new audio profiles that are planned to be released in the second half of 2020. LE Audio not only provides support for the same features as Bluetooth Classic, but also introduces a few new features and enhancements. For example, it introduces a new, higher quality and more efficient codec called LC3. It also introduces multi-stream capabilities, such as transmitting separate left and right audio streams, and even streams in multiple languages. Other features include support for enhanced Bluetooth hearing aids, and support for audio sharing and audio broadcasting to unlimited listeners. To learn more about Elasis, provider of the world's most advanced Bluetooth analyzers, visit elasis.com. Have a need for training or design services? Then contact our training partner, Novelbits, at novelbits.io. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video and learned a little bit more about BLE. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.